Hey, what's up all you fishing hacks out there? Thanks so much for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. Today, we're gonna teach you how to get out on the river and twitch spoons for coho. But before we do that, if you're brand new to the channel, don't forget, go down here and tap that little green subscribe button. You're gonna find all sorts of videos like educational content like we're doing today, but you're also gonna find entertaining stuff where we're just traveling around the world, targeting awesome fish species and bringing you along for the ride. So if you love fishing, tap subscribe. Now stay tuned, let's teach you how to twitch spoons for coho. Alright, so before we get out here and show you exactly how to fish these spoons, let's talk about the rod and reel. I really like a bait casting rod. This is a 9, 9, 8 to 15. This is actually the new Okuma X series. Super sensitive rod, has a nice tip so you can feel that spoon wobble and then you can also feel it wobble and see it wobble in the tip. But then it has some good backbone so when you lay into that fish, you got enough power to be able to fight it to the bank. So anything in that nine to 10 foot range, but I will say I do recommend these new X rods because they're pretty dope. Now talking about the reel, we have an Okuma Helios. This is a seven to three, nicely paired with this, um, with this X rod. So you can get away with any bait casting setup. Like I said, when I'm fishing spoons, I really like to fish a bait caster. You just have a lot more control and a lot more feel with the rod using a casting reel than you would a, a spinning reel. Other reasons is if you're swinging that spoon through the run and you, you know, a lot of times the current will be dragging on that spoon too much. So you gotta let a little bit more line out and that's just done so much easier with a casting reel. And I'll show you that when we get to the actual fishing of these spoons. So now we're gonna go to the line. So in the line, I have a 50 pound P-Line XTCB. The reason I like 50 pound is I don't wanna lose my spoons. I like to be able to yank on those things and get them out of the, 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 get them out of the rocks if they get stuck. Also, it cuts through the, the braided line cuts through that um, water column a lot easier than a mono or a fluorocarbon will. And you wanna make sure that your spoon is getting down into that current. So you, got, you wanna have a braided line there. I've done a double uni knot to the braided line. You can find more videos on that on YouTube if you wanna learn how to tie that, but any sort of knot that will affix your braid to your fluorocarbon. And then I basically have about a four to five foot piece of 15 pound P-line fluorocarbon. This is the salmon and steelhead, the STS, super abrasion resistant, nice line. You want something that's gonna be able to dig down there in the rocks and not be breaking on you. All right, so now let's talk about spoons. There's a vast array of spoons that you can get out there. You know, there's like the Steely, there's the Little Clio, there's P-Line makes an awesome spoon. There's a million different spoons you can get and honestly, they all work, especially for what we're gonna do out here today because when you're trying to twitch these spoons for coho, you're trying to just entice an aggressive action. You know, you want them just to get pissed at that spoon and come up and hit it. So I really like the P-Line spoon. It's got the nice shape that I wanna have on a spoon and they come in a million different freaking colors and they come in a few different sizes, but for twitching specifically, because you wanna keep that spoon down there in the water column, I really like the two thirds. The two thirds seems to do the best. You can keep it down into the zone as you're twitching. So what we're gonna do here, before we do anything, we're going to switch the hardware out on these spoons. I just don't like the hardware that they come with. And, um, you know, honestly, I don't like the hardware that any of the spood companies come with. So and we're actually working on something. So stay tuned for that little, little secret right there. But basically what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna go with the gold or the copper silver today. You got pretty clear water. We're gonna open this guy out of the package. And basically when you pull it out, it has, it has a treble hook that comes in the package which we're not gonna use. And then when you pull it out of the package, basically what it has is you have a split ring to a size two aught hook. And then you have like some clevises and stuff on here. So now what we're doing, basically I pulled the thing out of the package. Like I said, I'm gonna switch the hardware out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this hook. I'm gonna put my own hook on there. I just don't really like these hooks at all that come on these spoons. They're pretty cheap, to be honest. So we're gonna get rid of that, get rid of that hook. And then what I'm gonna do is I actually wanna drop that hook back a little farther. I wanna drop that hook back a little farther. So what I'm gonna do is add a barrel swivel. So I'm gonna add a barrel swivel to this, to this split ring there. So we're just gonna attach that thing on there like so. 
And then this thing comes with a little clevis, this little, this whole little system that it has up here. And honestly, I've had a couple of them break. I just don't like them. They're, I, they're just kind of cheap. So we're gonna, we're gonna get rid of that as well. We're gonna get rid of that, that clevis. Pull that off there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take another split ring and we're gonna add a split ring to the top of that. And this is best done with some split ring pliers. So one little note too, don't do this on the river. Make sure you do this hardware stuff all at your house because when your hands are super cold and stuff, it makes it tough to do this out here on the river. So now we have a split ring on top, a split ring on bottom, and then a barrel swivel attached to that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another barrel swivel to the top. Same thing, we're just gonna get that barrel swivel on there. And then we're gonna take a two-aught, this is a two-aught open eye must add siwash hook. These things are freaking deadly. Super sharp, got a knife, off, super nice offset bend. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that to that bottom of that barrel swivel, and we're gonna just clamp that right onto that barrel swivel. You wanna make sure that you really get that thing clamped down. Because if you don't, what'll happen is your hook will come off and then you'll be mad. All right, so there you have it. You have your barrel swivel, your split ring, your split ring, your barrel swivel, your hook. And that is how I prefer to run my spoons. There's a couple reasons, right? So I want that hook to be spinning. So if that fish grabs onto that hook, it can freely spin in his mouth and he isn't able to get any leverage on it and pull it out. Also, you have an extra spin from the line. So it's spinning on your line as well. And the fish isn't able to basically rotate that thing out. Also, the reason I hang this hook back a little bit is in theory, when that fish comes up, and basically grabs the spoon and then goes to turn down river, boom, the hook will grab the corner of his mouth like that. So that's kind of the theory behind that. He comes up, grabs it, that hook rotates, boom, gets the corner of his mouth. And those hooks are sharp. Just stab myself. All right, so now we're going to attach the spoon to your fluorocarbon like so. I just use a standard fisherman's knot, seven, seven, eight wraps, and then make sure you wet your line. You always wanna wet your line. Like so. Take my trusty Gerber scissors and cut this tagline off. I am gonna cut it into the box. We don't wanna leave that stuff out here. Alrighty, now we're ready to fish. All right guys, so now we're ready to fish. So when you're twitching these spoons, it's a lot like twitching a, it's a lot like twitching a jig. It's the same concept. You want to let that spoon get down in there. The only difference is is you don't want to pick up as much line. You don't need to reel as much when you're twitching these spoons because what happens is that thing flickers and then falls slowly and it's just not going to get to the bottom as quick as one of a twitching jig will because it has so much resistance. So I like to cast these up river a lot too just to make sure that I get them down in there. So we're cast that thing up river. And then as it's kind of falling, we're just twitching it a little bit. Let it get down, let some line out. This is where the bait caster comes in handy. I let some more line out. I know it's down in the strike zone now. Thought I had a fish, but it was a rock. It's very same motion as you would with a twitching jig, but it's slower. It's much, much slower of a twitch. So same thing, we're gonna cast this thing out here. Let it hit water, let it sink a little bit. And if you need to, just let a little line off that bait caster. And then as it starts to sink, twitch it. And see how I'm not picking up any line? You don't need to pick up any line until you feel bottom. So just keep twitching that thing. If you never feel bottom, never, never, never give a reel on the, on the spool. Never give it a reel if you're not touching bottom. Just keep twitching it. And even then, just let a little more line out. Keep twitching, letting just a little line out here. You're just trying to piss one of them off that's down in the hole, that's it. Just gonna reel that up again. And just kind of show you guys again. And the reason these spoons are so effective is because you can, 
swing them. So as a run like this, Sean, if you show them how this run is, it comes down, drops in, and then just turns into a nice run. So you can swing the spoon as you're twitching it. So as we cast it back out just like this, you see it hits the run, and then I instantly start twitching and letting that thing sink. But what the spoon's doing is it's already caught the current. So the spoon has already started to swing through that run. And I'm just twitching it as it's swinging. And I swear I can see a fish right in here. I think I've seen him move a couple times now, right in the heart of the run. In this water, you can see how I'm just letting that spoon do most of the work. I'm just letting that spoon do its thing. You don't need to reel much on the, on the, on the handle at all, because the spoon is catching so much more water as it falls that it just doesn't fall and get down to the bottom as easy as like a twitching jig would. You can see as I went up river here, I don't even have to do a reel on that spoon. It's still falling, I can see it down in there. Now it's getting closer to the bottom. I'm starting to lose tightness, so then boom, then I'll do a couple reels on it, but still keep it down there. Just like that. And then as you get into a deeper spot, you let a little bit more line out. That's what's so nice about these spools. Or, that, sorry, that's what's so nice about using a casting reel, is you can cast it out there, and as you need to let more line out, you just off the spool, let more line, just like that. And you're still in control of your lure and you can quickly reel some up and let it back out. It just gives you really full control of the setup. It can be deadly out here for these coho. We're fishing a river right now that honestly doesn't have very many coho in it. It just has a wild run of coho. Um, no hatchery fish are planted in it and there's just not a lot of coho in here right now. But I can tell you right now, if you put this presentation somewhere where there's a lot of fish, it will kill. It, it's deadly. And I just saw, the reason I wasn't paying attention to you guys, I just saw something roll down there. We're going to try to get down to it. As you guys can see, it's just this constant twitch motion. You don't want to do these big like whips. It's you, you just barely need to twitch it. Just, to, just like this, just a light twitch. And then as you start to lose, you know, as, as you feel like it's not doing it what you want to do anymore, you just reel in and make another cast. Because what's going to happen a lot of times with these spoons is they'll swing through the run, then they'll get to this side of the bank, and there's not really much else you can do but reel it in at that point. I'm always, a lot of times as I'm swinging through that run, I'm always letting some more line out until I feel that first tick. As soon as I feel that first tick to bottom, then I know I can, okay, crank one on the spool, boom, there was the bottom and I just keep twitching it through as it swings through that run. And then you little fish! Just kidding, got you guys. All right, addicts, there you have it. Thanks so much for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. Let me know, get out there, try this. Go twitch around, go see if you guys can twitch yourself up some coho on spoons. This does work well for Chinook too, and I've hooked quite a few steelhead doing the same thing as you guys saw in our Addicted Alaska 2 movie. Cameron was twitching a lot of spoons for those steelhead in Alaska, and they, they were crushing them. So get out there, try this technique. Thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate every single one of you subscribers that watch all of our videos. It means the world to us keep on doing it and we'll keep on making them. We'll see you on the river.